Hi, I'm Dr. Lulu, your fabulous host of the Genetic Genius Podcast. Welcome back to my channel. On this week's episode, my guest, Annie Bush, takes us on a deep dive into how epigenetics influence our gene expression and how we are in control of those factors. We will take a look at how nutrition, exercise, sleep, and lifestyle choices empower people with the knowledge that can lead to longer, healthier lives. After spending over 10 years as a federal and state prosecutor, Annie changed her focus to health and wellness education and connecting the physical body with the spiritual mind. Over the last decade, her mantra has been, it's hard to have a clear thought with a toxic body. As a nationally recognized certified brain health coach under both Dr. Daniel Amen and Dr. Dale Bredesen, she helps clear the physical brain of cognitive conditions such as ADD, anxiety, depression, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, dementia, and customizes holistic protocols addressing these conditions. Using three by four genetics, she utilizes your own DNA as your blueprint to drive your lifestyle choices regarding exercise, nutrition, sleep, and patterns, et cetera, for your optimal health. She uses photobiomodulation to stimulate the production of your own stem cells using the LifeWave stem cell activation patches. Hi everyone, welcome to the Genetic Genius Podcast. I am absolutely thrilled to have Annie Bush as my wonderful guest on the Genetic Genius today. We're gonna to be talking all about genetics, DNA, epigenetics, longevity. It's gonna be amazing. So welcome, Annie. Thank you so much, Dr. Nimu, for having me on. This is gonna be so much fun today. You're so welcome. I'm excited. But before we like jump on into the body and the DNA, <laughs> let's start with you first. Tell us a little bit about your background, how you got started, where you are today, your passions and place on the planet. I started off <laughs> on a legal track <laughs> after college. I went, I was a legal clerk. I was a paralegal and ended up being an attorney for the government, both the Department of Interior and the state of Florida. Now, what are those skill sets that you acquire being an attorney? You read a lot of material, you have to absorb it, you have to remember it, and you have to know how to apply it. Keep that in mind. And then about 10 years into it, both of my parents got cancer. And most of us, as you know, health and wellness space get here either through some personal physical condition or a condition of a loved one. And both of my parents got cancer. My father passed away and my mother got cancer. And it was then that I saw how the quote unquote traditional medical community was treating her, her or not. Mm. They weren't teaching her what to eat. And, and I was getting frustrated. And then I was getting angry. And then I decided I wanted to do something. And that's when I made the switch from being in a legal career in over to being in health and wellness. And I did the personal training as a health coach. I am now a certified brain health coach under both Dr. Daniel Avon and Dr. Gail Bredesen. Mm -hmm. And I am taking all of the knowledge that I have gained and now created a holistic longevity strategist program that basically is incorporating a lot of that. And now with the new stem cell technology. Awesome. I love it. That's great. And yet our brain is so important, <laughs> right? It's of course, it's not our biggest organ, <laughs> but it is. But when, we, when we lose the brain, we lose, right, that's we lose it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Our skin is our biggest organ, but we don't always think of it that way. When it comes to stem cells, because guess where stem cells come from? The brain. <laughs> our skin. <laughs> the skin. <laughs> yes, this is true. Okay. So I love that. And I love your journey. And like you said, so many people do have that connection when it comes to empowering their new health direction path, a journey when it comes to a loved one and shifting our perspective. And I also really liked what you said too, about being able to remember things from that lawyer perspective, because there is a lot of scientific information out there. <laughs> yes. When you start, when you switch gears and these certification programs are not for the faint of heart, especially the brain <laughs> certification programs. Me being used to taking in a lot of information and being able to recall it, having those skill sets, 
has really served me well. Totally. Yeah. When I was in med school, I had to come up with all different ways to remember things and uh, working with my friends. We all studied together. That's all I did was study, of course, <laughs> but you had to, I had to do all these brain remembering techniques to help my body to, to have something trigger. And that's a great way to remember things about just a holistic lifestyle in general. Okay. What's this? What can I use it for? And even when I, cause I started law school at the age of 40. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't a spring chicken. <laughs> and even then I started looking into what are the supplements? What are the nutrients that are going to support my brain health? And mm -hmm. I found out about Hebrazine A and other, you know, nootropics to help support memory and focus even way back then. Mm, that's great. And we're going to talk about the brain, of course, because it's so important for activation of our entire body. But let's start with, I'd love for us to start about like the beginning of busting some myths <laughs> around longevity, because I think that's a really, there's so many false, I think, myths around aging, longevity, all that. And I'd love for you to talk about your thoughts, the myths <laughs> and our body's ability to really heal ourselves when it comes to the DNA in our cells. <laughs> All right, my definition of aging, because everyone has their own definition, right. is the accumulation of cellular damage. That's basically what it is. When we take in or are exposed to toxins and our body can't keep up with the clearing and getting rid of them, mm -hmm. that's when the inflammation starts, which then leads to disease, which then leads to the accelerated aging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a simple way to think about it, but for me, that makes sense. Yeah. So to restop that aging process, mm -hmm. we're not stopping the chronological aging. We're stopping the damage that's associated with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then thanks to LifeWave and the stem cell patches that we're going to talk about, we can now reverse our cellular age by activating our own stem cell production. Nice. This is amazing. I love that. And what about, so what about regeneration? So if we're talking about damage, let's say for instance, you had a crazy twenties, you know, where you're doing lots of things and partying and you were maybe damaging your liver and your cells, or maybe you're in the sun for a long period of time. How does that regeneration process take place? And is it, what's the acceleration of that using different techniques? Each of either our organs, our skin, our brain, every cell can regenerate or it dies through apoptosis, right? right? The, the key is if it's a damaged cell, our body gets rid of it during intermittent fasting, through autophagy, through apoptosis, those damaged cells either get repaired or we get rid of them. We, we want to get rid of what we don't need for sure. <laughs> yes, and those cells that do not serve us. Exactly. So when we were children, we had tons of stem cells and what mm -hmm. stem cells do so if you're a little kid and you scrape your knee, it's the stem cells that are in that army that go to the scrape knee to create the new skin. Mm -hmm. So as, but the deal is as we age, the number of stem cells that we have decreases. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they're not as feisty as they used to be. So when you <laughs> twist your ankle playing pickleball or whatever you do, or twist your, you know, sprain your wrist or whatever, the stem cells that you have left take a little bit longer to get to that injured area. And then they don't have as much oomph when they get there to do mm -hmm. the work. Mm -hmm. And that's why it takes so much longer then to heal as we age. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes total sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, David Schmidt, who's the CEO and creator of the LifeWave Patches mm -hmm. was first commissioned by the U.S. to create a, it ended up being what we call the Energy Enhancer Patch, but the technology is a non-transdermal patch that activates pathways. Now, this is going to be really important because this is going to tie into to our DNA discussion. Our body is full of pathways, and if you're an acupuncturist or know about acupuncture, mm -hmm. you know you have meridians and pathways that connect your organs and all your systems. And then they have spots where they open up on your body. David Schmidt created a non-transdermal patch, which I'm showing you, <laughs> that basically opened up those pathways for the U.S. Navy SEALs. That, and it, the energy patch is actually a left and a right because our body is a positive side and a negative energy side. Right. Um, to create that flow of energy between the points to give the Navy SEALs more energy without stimulants, without drugs, without side effects. 
So the patch, and I'm going to show to you here. I'm going to go ahead. It looks like a little band aid. Seriously, <laughs> a little band aid, but, mm -hmm. but it has a crystal, white crystal center. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this off. So if you're familiar, so we talked about the theories of acupuncture and those pathways and the tops of those points where those meridians open up. Well, but we're also going to add in some photobiomodulation. So what is that? <laughs> so just like when the sun, certain wavelengths of sunlight hit your skin that acts like had there's like a biochemical reaction, then your skin then sends that wavelength to parts of your body and that light wave, that wavelength gets converted to vitamin D. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not like you see a beam of light coming down, right? <laughs> The body is just absorbing that sunlight and doing that biochemical reaction by itself. So with the patch, where you're using your body heat as the source of the energy, the body heat hits the, the crystal matrix in the patch, which then creates that wavelength of light and sends it back down to the meridians. Mm. And the wavelength with, it's called the X39, mm -hmm. is the name of the patch that activates the ghk cu copper peptide mm -hmm. that stimulates stem cells so literally wearing the x39 patch daily and stimulating your stem cells for six months can reverse your cellular age by eight years wow that's pretty amazing so talking about the damage that you did in college hands up so, right that was me <laughs> all right everybody hands up and david schmidt talks about our bodies being divinely designed mm -hmm. when we put these stem cell patches on the stem cells know where to go and what to repair mm -hmm. so they will go to the site of most inflammation it will go down that pathway to repair that organ that liver that kidney that leaky gut, all of you out there with autoimmune diseases, the underlying condition, the underlying condition for autoimmune, it's a leaky gut. Mm -hmm. Yep, this is true. <laughs> but the stem cells can go and start healing that leaky gut. Those gut cells. That's amazing. I love that. That's great. Thank you for talking one about how the body regenerates naturally and two, the lifeway patches, which are so great. I use them myself. I really love them for helping my patients to activate the DNA, which is so important. Let's talk about, so we talked about stem cells and the way that they heal and activate the DNA in different systems of the body. And I really liked what you said too, about how the, our body is so intelligent, right? This innate intelligence. And when we're, whatever we're doing, whether we're doing Doing a lifeway patch, or we're doing, you know, taking herbs or a nutraceutical, our body knows what to do with it when we give it the right information. And you know what? That's what our genes are there for. Mm -hmm. our, that's what our genes do. They're like our information centers of how. And Dr. Um, Yale Jaffe from 3X4, I love the way she puts it. She said, it's our genes function like instructions on how we relate to the world, mm. how we respond to the world, those epigenetic factors and how they influence us. And that's great. You know, We're going to talk about that more too, what epigenetics right. are so people can understand that. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Tying in the life rate patches, they work on these same pathways. There's one, if you're familiar with, there's one that works on inflammation. Mm -hmm. There's one that works for detoxification. Mm -hmm. So we can now segue into <laughs> our discussion about DNA, which is our divine blueprint for our health plan. This is our longevity strategy. Working with um, genetics over a year ago, I was like, this is, should be everybody's blueprint. Exactly. I know if people are like, why are people using it? I love to talk about it with, with my patients. It's so eye-opening, right? It gives, it's so empowering to actually understand what's going on inside your individual body and be given the tools to explore it and to actually make a shift in how our bodies work and expand. And when you take, and I know you love tests, <laughs> when you, you know, even take a very comprehensive blood lab. And it's a snapshot of what's going on in your body right then and there. But it's your genetics that explain why and then how to get that body back into homeostasis. Exactly. Once I laid my genetics and my blood lab next to each other and looked at them together, 
it made so much more sense. Yeah, that's so true. A great example of that is the liver. A lot of people, why is my cholesterol always elevated? Why are my liver enzymes elevated? And then when we look at the DNA, we can actually see oh, this is the way that your body um, is processing those epigenetic factors and affecting your DNA, which is then affecting the way that your cells work, which is affecting your blood work. <laughs> it's all connected. <laughs> I know. I always talk about my husband and we got his blood labs done and we got his genetics done mm -hmm. and he's got a null in the glutathione pathways. Mm, Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. So that explained a lot about what was going on with him from a methylation and detoxification standpoint mm -hmm. is because he wasn't making glutathione. Yeah. Which is so important. We have glutathione is a huge, so we'll talk about detoxification. Can we right. backtrack a little bit and sure. talk about peptides? You mentioned a peptide earlier, and I want to make sure that the listeners understand what a peptide is and how it uh, functions in the body and the importance of peptides for different systems in the body as well. Well, well I'm going to concentrate on, the, on two. Okay. Two um, peptides. <laughs> yeah. It's GHKCU. Mm-hmm which is a copper peptide that's made throughout the body. Most of the research is being accredited to Dr. Lauren Picard back in the 1970s. Mm -hmm. He's the one that really connected the dots between the copper peptide and stimulating the stem cells. A lot of the research and application of that was for skin. Even in his book, a lot of that is for skin. So basically David Schmidt had taken that research and applied it to the non-transdermal technology on how to stimulate that copper peptide. Then there's another one, it's called AHKCU, mm -hmm. which is another peptide that is specifically found in your muscle and your heart and your brain. Mm -hmm. That when you activate that, specifically as we are aging, since we're talking about longevity, right. as we age, we want to retain and build as much muscle as we can so that we don't get into a, a condition of sarcopenia where we're muscle wasting. Right. Yeah. At totally atrophy your whole body. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And that happens to some people when they're in, like when you mentioned the autoimmune diseases earlier, when you're in a chronic disease state, you're not able, or you're not accessing the ability to move out of that through maybe activating your DNA. Our bodies can atrophy because we don't have the energy to do the specific things. Like maybe we're fatigued. We can't exercise. We can't eat. Yes. Yeah. The cycle, we get into this cycle and, and we're going to talk about some specifics in relationship to that. And I loved that you mentioned those two peptides and peptides can help with all areas of the body, right? There, we have specific ones for hormones, specific ones for women and men, testosterone, okay. and you can tune in. I'll have a guest on hopefully this in the, in the future about that. Well, we'll talk yeah. about peptides. Yeah, that's great. And when you were talking about the personal blueprint of longevity, so how do we use our, let's talk about the blueprint, what that looks like from the DNA perspective and how we use it to activate our own personal healing. Great question. Great question. All right. First thing is we need to shift the paradigm on how we think about our genetics and our genes. There are not good genes and bad genes. And right. There are not <laughs> mutations. There are variations. Exactly. <laughs> yes. It's just who you are. It's how you were built. And we, and it's almost like applying a mindfulness to it and that we're just accepting of them without judgment. So yeah. we're going to, we're going to let MTHFR off the hook today. We're not going <laughs> to isolate any particular genes. There are no genes out there that are villains. I got that gene. Bad oh. gene. <laughs> yeah, no, all genes are good. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's, they, you know, it is, it just is what it is, but it's a cause and effect. This is the way we think about our genetics. If I do this, then this will happen. Mm -hmm. So when you get your DNA done and you know what genes you want to stay silent and which ones you want to turn on mm -hmm. and which ones you want to have stayed turned off and know what those epigenetic factors are in your environment, exercise, nutrition, what we eat, how well we recover, our sleep patterns, all those epigenetic factors that affect those genes we get to make the decision <laughs> and make those choices. And that's why I really uh, encourage anyone to get their DNA done. You know what choices you need to make. Exactly. <laughs> because doing mine totally changed the way I'm eating, the way I'm thinking about exercise, because with the 3X4 genetic report, they take 36 of the major pathways. And when we talk about these pathways, 
they're really specific as to which ones are actually, you, know, you can get your DNA done and you can get a big old report and all it is data. <laughs> right. That you have no idea what to do with. That's why it's great to work with a practitioner like Annie and myself that know how to identify it and analyze it. Cause that's important. So what three by four done is taken it, it's distilled it into 36 pathways and then take and stay with me. They took this 36, 36 pathways and put them into six categories. And then distilled it down into the three major ones that are going to impact your health that you can actually do something about. Mm -hmm. And then with each of those pathways, they give you food recommendation, nutrient recommendations, but most importantly, our lifestyle recommendations, the exercises that you should be doing, the exercises your body was designed to do. Mm -hmm. All right. So my big reveal, we're going to go through here. <laughs> I told Dr. Doodle Lulu, we're just going to talk about mine because then it'll make more sense. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, I love it. Yes. And my, we're going to, in a couple episodes, I think in August, I'm going to be doing a, a revelation of some of mine, which is going to be super fun and exciting because I think people don't understand just what it is. What is a genetic report? I'm trying to, my goal, one of my goals of the genetic genius is to help educate about how, what our DNA is, how we can use it as a way to revolutionize our life. So we are empowered to live the best life through our genetics, whether that's like you said, lifestyle, food, nutrition, herbal supplements, everything out there that we can do the sun. <laughs> We're just going to feed him. We need to feed your genetics. So both of my parents died with cancer. Mm. So that's what I was expecting to see pop up throughout my DNA report. No, years before my father had an aneurysm. Mm. All right. And we attributed it to the medication that he was on, that his blood pressure got too low and then it spiked too quickly and blew the valve in his heart, the aneurysm. So we just attributed it to the He's medication. like, yeah, okay, must be that. <laughs> right. There you go. I get my DNA report back. My, <laughs> big, back. my big categories are inflammation, methylation, and my vascular system. Oh boy. <laughs> All right. So everybody, you can see me here on YouTube, but for those of you out in podcast land, I am five foot five and a half. I weigh probably about 113. I've been a personal trainer, health coach, brain health coach. I'm gluten-free, dairy-free, and been eating a keto lifestyle. <laughs> okay. So what came up in my DNA is that first, and I'll shortcut this, but the bottom line is I am not built to eat animal <laughs> and a keto for those out there that would know, don't know about a keto specific diet is very animal protein focused. The saturated fat is your friend. Right. I yes. <laughs> Which can be, and well, that's a whole nother. And actually I think that's I, a and, whole nother yeah, thing. But there's an episode I coming am, up about that. <laughs> yeah. We're using bacon grease for sauteing vegetables. Mm -hmm. We're eating grass fed beef. Life right. is good. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> So Not for vascular was, disease. <laughs> so that, you know, is specifically, there's a number of genes, uh, it's like IL-6, mm -hmm. I have ACE, I have the double deletion there. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are like, no more animal saturated fat. I'm like, okay, I can handle this. You're like, hey, I got this. You can do a keto and a vegetarian. It. There is a vegetarian like option for that, which is great. Right. <laughs> However, further down my genetic journey, I'm susceptible to histamine overload. Oh boy. <laughs> so my body is not clearing. It's not absorbing. It's not clearing. Once it gets into my system, it's staying too long. And there, for those of your listeners out there, there are certain lists of histamine causing foods. Yes. So okay. those are to avoid. <laughs> Liberating foods. Right. And guess what's on the list? <laughs> Avocados and walnuts. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oops. So for those of you who are not familiar with a keto based diet, you use out you eat a lot of avocados. Walnuts are very good for your brain. Right. So here I was eating those very things. 
that were creating the inflammation in my body, number one, in my vascular system, and number two, were building up and were not. So you're having this buildup of inflammation that you didn't even know about, and it was affecting you because we don't always know. We our body does gives us signs and signals that we have inflammation, but sometimes we one tune them out, <laughs> and two we don't listen. <laughs> and yeah, yes. And the only time that this would wear its little ugly head with me is when I was hiking. Mm, interesting. See, I love going hiking, waterfall hiking, trails going, and I would start going up an elevation. I'm doing that. That was my little warning signs. And I just thought I was deconditioned. I hadn't trained enough, blah, blah, blah. But here, no. <laughs> so yes, your body is going to send you signs and symptoms. What are those? Headaches, migraines, diarrhea, constipation, body aches. Whenever you eat something or are exposed to something and your body reacts to it, that is a sign. <laughs> and the, the other signs that I was getting is we would have a heavy protein meal, like some grass-fed beef, mm -hmm. and I would be automatically in the bathroom. Oh, now, yeah, that's a huge so, sign. <laughs> right. So, but I did my research. And I thought I just wasn't making enough stomach acid mm, to break it down, mm -hmm. to break it down. So I was just taking certain enzymes as the band-aid. Mm. If I had a really good meal with avocados and avocado oil, I would be in the bathroom. Interesting. <laughs> I just said, okay, then I need this other kind of enzyme, digestive enzyme when I have this type of meal, not realizing that my body is just not designed to break this down. Very yeah. eye-opening for you. <laughs> That's huge. Very eye-opening. Yeah, huge, it, right? And we can't have that same information. You can't get that from like a food sensitivity test. It's not going to tell you that information. It, it's, you yeah. know, very, our genetics give us a, a completely different blueprint. Like you said, a map of us, which is very individualized because from you to your husband, to me, we each have our own genes that then are that map, that blueprint of what is the best for us in this moment in time. And some of the other lifestyle things that uh, are in the, the three, I guess, four genetic report, which is, it's just amazing in the, in the category of exercise. My body is designed for those slow twitch muscles, the long, slow endurance type exercises mm -hmm. and power lifting. Mm, that interesting. Like, <laughs> I know. That's what my body is designed to do. But what it also is designed to do is not release fat from exercise. So as we understand our genetics, they're there. We either turn them on or we turn them off. We don't turn them on at all. If I was someone, if I was carrying extra weight, my body is not designed to release those fat cells through exercise. Uh-oh. <laughs> I, I need to do it through calorie restriction and intermittent fasting. Which is a part of the interesting piece of keto, right? <laughs> not, with cal not the caloric restriction necessarily, but definitely right. the intermittent fasting is a huge piece of the ketogenic diet. <laughs> Right. So you see those typical DNA reports that are just stacks of data. Mm -hmm. What they have done is they've put these in categories and group the genes that oh, synergistically play together in those pathways, like little simple. And then you can really understand it. So if I was somebody who was like 30 pounds overweight and I was exercising and exercising, right, go, go. <laughs> right, and not losing any weight, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be until I had my DNA done to understand that wasn't the way my body. That's a huge piece. I'm so glad you brought that up because a lot of patients and listeners out there are doing all different types of things to try to lose weight and they feel frustrated or maybe they're trying to gain weight and they feel frustrated. They're like, Oh, what's going on? And I've seen so many patients be so empowered with their genetic reports because they actually, they, it takes a quote unquote guilt factor out of it. Cause you're like, Oh, I feel like, why me? Why me? And then you're like, Oh, it's me, <laughs> but it's an, me, me in a different way. It's so funny with the why me thing. You know, right. I was telling my husband about my results and I was telling him about the avocados and he said, see now, you know, how I felt when you took away my sugar <laughs> bad, <laughs> no sugar's bad. No, definitely no. But to the point um, that you just made, what happens is, <laughs> especially now we're getting our advice from Facebook, YouTube, 
Google. <laughs> Google, Dr. Google. Right. He's not your doctor. <laughs> right. If it sounds good, it must be good for me. Which is not true. And there's no. so many things that are, yeah, I love that you brought that up. So many individualized things. And it, something could be quote unquote recommended for on one of those social media platforms or a, a Google search or something that could be contraindicated for you, whether that's for an herb you're taking or a pharmaceutical you're taking or a lifestyle or your genetics. So it's really important to check in with a health practitioner to make sure that something's in alignment with you before starting it. <laughs> Don't just right. get and choose. <laughs> so like with the LifeWave patches that, that right on the website are all the studies and all the science. Mm -hmm. If the 3X4 genetics, when you get your report, it's put together in a summary form by category, by exercise, by nutrition. So it's very easy to understand, but then you have the list of all the genes. So right. you can go do the geeky look up, you know, because that's what we do. <laughs> right. The right. geeky stuff is what we love. But then you know what your gene is and what your variation. And when I do the assessment with people, once they get their reports, I run it by 3X4 first. I run my analysis through with them to make sure that I haven't caught anything. And then we sit down and you get your report. So you get the lists of all your genes. And if they're having a very high impact, a high impact, a medium impact, or a very low impact on your life so that you can make those educated choices. Yeah. So important. Yes. And I really enjoyed what you, that whole discussion. It was so important. And what about, okay, so we're talking about genetic testing and you mentioned the IL-6 and inflammation. And I'd love for us to talk about that because uh, that, and then like a segue into the glutathione and detoxification, because IL-6 is so important for our inflammatory pathways. And that's a great one for people to understand, especially if they're in a chronic inflammation state or from that autoimmune disease perspective. It's because it's going to, it's going to live in your fat. That inflammation is going to live in your fat cells, which is going to make you more susceptible to glucose tolerance, mm -hmm. um, high blood pressure, diabetes, all <clears> those <throat> chronic conditions. And that's why this IL-6 is so important. And the first thing they told me to do is decrease the animal fat. For me, that was in my inflammatory category. It was causing like right. underlying systemic inflammation with every piece of what you were doing <laughs> when you were feeding. Right. And and so it depends So you meet you and you know this, you meet your patients where they are. I'm a personal trainer, a health coach, thought I was doing all the right things. And just because you look at somebody and they look healthy mm -hmm. doesn't mean that these, this inflammation is not going on inside your body doing something at a certain rate. Yeah. Because you know, what we can see from the outside, like you said, right. and what at that perspective, but the inside has a whole different dynamic because all of our cells are, they're able, like we mentioned earlier, they're able to continue working. They just do their job. They're not right. going to let you die. They're going to keep on doing their right. job unless things elevate. They're going to send that signal, send the signal, something's wrong, something wrong. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to fix it. So they try to fix it, quote unquote, fix it. It. And then when we continue on that chronic disease pathway, then it just like volcanoes, right? The onion layer effect gets bigger and bigger until we see this, maybe a massive thing, like an extreme chronic condition explodes in our reality because we and haven't is, been listening. And this is especially true in the brain because we had mentioned brain, health, right. brain yeah. health earlier, that there's a lot of redundancy built in the brain. If one part of your brain is starting to shrink, mm -hmm. because let me just do a little sidebar here. All the inflammation that's going on from here down. And you and that was the neck. She did like the neck <laughs> down is entering your brain. And what your brain does when it detects inflammation, it hunkers down. Right. So oh no, inflammation's brain. coming in. <laughs> and I'm going to hunker down. And that's why blood sugar regulation. Now that did not show up as a high risk. Were you a, a low sugar person in general? Yeah. 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 I would imagine so, from what you said earlier, like your diet and lifestyle, you weren't eating a lot of sugar, which is right. battery acid for our system. It's so toxic. <laughs> right. But there's no genes that are triggering cravings or anything like that. Oh, nice. Um, Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> There's no more mountain climbing. But that's an important point you said is that patients that are listening out there that have sugar is huge. And they wonder like, why am I always craving it? Why can I, why can't I have that switch turn off? And that's because, go ahead. <laughs> there are certain genes that regulate your leptin and your ghrelin. 
Exactly. The satiety. Like for me, there's a satiety pathway Mm -hmm. that I feel full with not a lot of food. Right. You know, my husband goes through those, we go through this all the time. He's, I just need more food than you. <laughs> it's so different genetics, right? Yeah. Different genetics. Yeah. Some people are like hungry all the time. Like we have a, I have a high metabolism. I know my genetics already. Of course, I've done my several reports <laughs> and um, I know that I'm, I'm metabolized just very quickly. And if I don't eat, I just, I could just lay down and pass out. <laughs> like no problem. Yeah. <laughs> maybe a blood sugar regulation. Yes, too. this is true. I do have blood sugar regulation. <laughs> as well. But yeah, I need fuel to help my body run and a much more fuel than a regular person. (laughs) And and speaking of fuel, there's what are referred to as beneficial genes. Mm, What are those? That that will come to your rescue, sort of. And that if you, we can just use that analogy that they'll come to your rescue to help you with these other ones. Right. And two of the beneficial, I have seven or eight, but two that I just Brace. You're like, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> that I metabolize caffeine very quickly. Ah, yes, that, this is true. Talk about this gene. I love this gene. <laughs> yes, which means I can have caffeine later in the day and it clears out of my system quicker mm-hmm. so it doesn't affect my sleep. So, all of you out there, so this is where it would play in. If you're having trouble falling asleep or staying asleep and you're having caffeine too late in the day, it is staying in your system longer and you're not right. clearing it. Yeah. And it's affecting you. Yeah. So important. Yeah. And some people, even if they have it at all, right. And that we can tell that from genetic reports as well. If you're feeling super wired and you, that doesn't ever leave your system, you're like, oh, I can never process this caffeine. And so mostly, most of those people don't usually drink caffeine anyway, but yeah, it's somebody who's like a triple A personality that, you know, (laughs) yeah, high stress, high energy, shutting down to be able to go to sleep. Right. Yeah. I don't have caffeine after two o'clock. If I do, I'm dim. Totally. I will not sleep. It's not a good plan for me. Um, and I need my sleep. Like you said, I'm like, I have that need the energy. Let's talk about sleep because sleep is so important. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. So for me, I have always known that, and I just thought it was because I'm an introvert mm-hmm. that I, I build up my energy. I recharge in quiet stillness, leave me alone. Mm-hmm. That's what introverts do. Extroverts get their energy from other people. I recharge when I'm alone. I have an aura ring. Mm-hmm. And those of you that are familiar with aura rings, they do things like they measure your heart rate and your heart rate variability and your sleep and your exercise. And it will send you messages that you need more time to recover. Mm-hmm. So I was getting all these messages from my aura ring after I've had like too busy of a day, too crazy of a day. I would get messages the next day saying, hey, you need to recover more today. Mm. Take more time for yourself. Mm -hmm. That's what came back in my genetics. (laughs) (laughs) That I need more time to recover after (laughs) exercise. And I was just away for three days at a conference. When you're at a conference, you're like, there's never a downtime. (laughs) I crashed when I came home, Mm -hmm. literally, Mm -hmm. because I did not have a good recovery time in the evening. Yeah, they should so, change that about conferences, right? There should be there should be more self recovery time where you're you know spa the, time in the afternoon. Yeah, of course, that's the conference I like to go to. There you go. You and I are going to start one. Yes, where it's like a couple <laughs> of hours of lecture, and then you have a total like time in nature, and you're relaxing and spying it up in the afternoon, so you can rest and recover and soak in the info. <laughs> We're gonna do some forest bathing over here. Exactly. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I love that conference. Yeah, Um, I know. So good. Okay. So IL-6 and inflammation. And let's talk about the detox and glutathione because you mentioned it earlier. And let's talk about, so let's, if we can back up and talk about detoxification in general, and then maybe to tie it into your genetic report, which is so key. Why is it so important for our cells? First of all, to have you talk about the apoptosis earlier about the detoxification piece. So we are exposed all day long every day to toxins, whether we, we understand it or really are aware of it mm-hmm. through our foods, through our air, being in, you're exposed to the toxins from everything that's in the carpet to that's in the upholstery to what's in the vents, depending on the quality of your water. So every cell in your body makes glutathione right. and it just keeps circulating and detoxifying you on a daily basis. Now, this is what's interesting. 
LifeWave has a glutathione patch, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which when you, once you put it on, it stimulates your body's production of glutathione. Now, if you take glutathione orally, the liposomal it, form or something, liposomal is a little bit better. If you take a capsule or a tablet or something, oh, it cap, really yeah. gets destroyed in your stomach acid. Yeah. And a lot of stuff does that. A lot of my patients are, will be taking specific supplements in a capsule or tablet form. Like you're, you, it's not healthy for you to do that, especially if you have your gut is completely not functioning. If you're not, I don't have the correct stomach acid, you have leaky gut or you're not absorbing in any way, you're not going to process those vitamins. <laughs> and even, even in, in a perfect world, how much are you going to absorb? Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So you don't want to be pooping out that or peeing out those expensive supplements. Or what's the half-life? Right. You know, how long are they actually effective? So the studies with the glutathione is even like a liposomal, mm -hmm. the half-life is maybe an hour, mm -hmm. maybe IV drips of glutathione. Right raise your glutathione levels for up to two hours, and then it goes back to normal. The patch actually advances your glutathione levels and keeps them there to about a 300% increase over 24 hours. Which is huge, especially Which when we're huge. talking about detoxification. Mm -hmm. Right now, here's the deal. David Schmidt, he says, once you get those pathways going, especially mm -hmm. he wears his one, one weekend, he doesn't wear his glutathione patch every day because he's got his his levels up. He's right. not. <laughs> yes. He, his body is moving and <laughs> detoxing. Mm -hmm. I get my DNA back. So I'm, I was like ready to start cutting back on my glutathione patch. <laughs> I don't have a null in the glutathione pathway, but it's, I have a high impact. So mm -hmm. I have to go back to wearing my glutathione patch every day. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that has to do with my detoxification and my built my methylation pathways. And why uh -huh. is it so important for detoxification? What's the, let's talk about that piece. Why? I think that's a, it's a buzzword, right? It's right. so overused, but why is it really important for our cells to detox? Because the far poor liver can't get rid of toxins. <laughs> that's they right. Do. Liver. <laughs> yes. Liver, you know, it's the most disrespected organ we have. Really, poor liver. <laughs> I know nobody wants to talk about your liver, but guess what? It's what does all the detoxification, mm -hmm. especially for, really from hormones, right? We got you like for, if you're having listening out here and you have some hormonal issues happening, you have to look at your liver hundred percent. Number one, number two, thyroid gets converted from the inactive T4 into active T3 is in your liver. <laughs> where do key, where does beta hydroxybutyrate get converted to ketones liver <laughs> in your liver. So if your body, if your glutathione levels aren't up, these toxins are getting into the liver and the liver just says, can't do anything. Sorry. I'm not. And then the toxins are building up and the liver can't do this filtering function that it's designed right. to do. Yeah. So important. And our, our liver also makes cholesterol. And when I see, we're talking about lab reports, when I see those labs and genetic reports with the cholesterol off, I'm like, Oh, let's, we got to look at the liver because if things are not functioning well in the liver and how do we use cholesterol? We use it to make hormones <laughs> and brain cells and brain cells. And if we do not have a good liver functioning, then those things are going to start to be affected. And we're not even going to start talking about statins. <laughs> No, don't go there. Don't go there. <laughs> don't go there. Um, You'll start to yeah. see the flames start to erupt out of my head. I think we know those buttons to push. No, right. No yeah. No. Um, yeah. So those were like the major revelations for me that totally just changed my world as far as what exercises I should be doing, what I should be eating. Mm -hmm. Because now those histamine foods are to be avoided. And then through the methylation and methylation is your body's ability to really clear the garbage. Um, right. We used to use this analogy. It's like you put a car in the garage, close the garage door, turn the car on and let the exhaust build up in the garage. That's super toxic. <laughs> that's super toxic. <laughs> yeah. And that's what methylation is. If you're not methylating that, those toxins, that exhaust is just building up. We need to open up the garage door to let the toxins out. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's those, it's folate. It's your methylate, your B12s. Now, interesting enough, I pulled out my blood labs and I had super high B12. Mm, and were you taking a B12 uh, supplement or just, a B complex? Just a, just a regular, it's part of my multi. So I talked to the gal that did my DNA report with me. Mm -hmm. She said, why that is, is because I have a SNP. Mm -hmm. And what's a SNP? Talk about what a SNP is. <laughs> the SNP is that little, our little, our genes 
We get one from our mother and one from our father. And that's right. <laughs> right. We get pairs and the variations, like we are 99.9% .9 the same. And it's the 0.1% that's making are all these variations that make us different. So in that um, chain of DNA, that SNP is like that variation, that change in the chain, the letters, change in the chain. I have a genetic variation mm -hmm. that makes it more difficult from the B12 to get from the bloodstream into the cell. Mm, wow. So important to it's know that. I'm in my bloodstream and mm -hmm. not getting in. So I need to you start switching over to a more bioavailable form. Mm -hmm of B12 to make sure it's getting into the cells rather than just hanging out in my bloodstream. And that's what, that's what's great with that comparison you were saying about looking at the blood work and looking at the genetics together. Cause that's when it all starts to make sense because they explain yeah. one another. Right. Yeah. It's like you have the, the blueprint, like you're saying like the genetic yeah. blueprint, and then we can see the blood and how the blood's working. Cause the blood gives us that, that snapshot. It's like a quick snapshot mm -hmm. of what's happening in the moment in time, basically within the last 90 days. But the genetics is just not that it's all long-term necessarily, but it gives us that like that that uh, longer blueprint and i just think in the work that i do up to this point that's why i think we really have to change how we talk about our dna dna and our genetics because when i talk to people about getting their dna done the first thing that comes out of them there is a, they're afraid factor they don't want to know because they think like they're doomed well your dna is <laughs> your destiny <laughs> yes it is yeah dna is not our destiny that we have, that it has to be marked from <laughs> the uh, the slate somewhere along the way that it came through that it's our that's what we have predicts our future and that's not how dna works <laughs> Oh, it explains our future is what it does. Yes. And helps and us to tells, change it. And it tells us what to do, what choices that we can make. Like my grocery list is totally different now. Mm, so important. So how do you work with, let's talk about food and because it's so important when it comes to our genetics, how do you tell you change your lifestyle when it comes to eating and how did that reflect how your husband and you eat? together because i know that can be it could be challenging if you had completely different things so how when you work with your uh, your clients how does that work like you're like okay here's your genetic report here's your partner and your family how do you work together <laughs> basically we come we take it and that's why i love the way that 3x4 does it is they break it down let's give you the three main pathways that are having the most impact on your health mm -hmm. okay Mm -hmm. then depending on your personality and you know where I'm going with this, we're going to break it down to the smallest steps that you can succeed at. So, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. If we're going to start with breakfast, right? Yeah. One, the most important meal of the day, let's start there. <laughs> let's just start with one meal and let's change that meal so that it's reflective of what's going to benefit you from a genetic standpoint. That's mm -hmm. it. We're going to start with breakfast. Mm -hmm. And once you're comfortable with that, then we're going to look at lunch and then we'll add in dinner. If you're somebody, there's a book, it's called Tiny Habits. Mm -hmm. I know that one. And it's basically just breaking it down to the smallest step where someone can su succeed. And yes. that step's going to be different for any, for everyone. Exactly. Because if you try to do every change, like for me, I, I like to change things a lot <laughs> in my lifestyle, food, et cetera, because I get bored. But if we, if when we're trying to make a new habit, if we decide we're going to change everything at once, there's no compliance. It's just too overwhelming, especially if you're a patient who has um, some genetics, which are prone to anxiety and depression. Those habits can just are really difficult to switch. That's going to de derail you from the start. Exactly. And, yeah. And the reason why habits are so hard is because every cell in your body has memory. Mm -hmm. So intellectually, you decide you're going to change your mind about something, right? There's an avocado in my refrigerator. Every cell in my body wants to go put it on a salad. <laughs> avocado. Right, because that's how it's, right. I'm making the salad and next thing I'm slicing the avocado. You're like, wait, what happened? My, <laughs> right. Because every cell in my body, that's the next step is putting the avocado on the salad. Mm -hmm. So that's why habits are so hard to change is because we have to change all the cellular memory once we change our mind. Yes. So important. I love that you brought that up. And that's what we talked about food, 
choices, sugar, gluten, all those things that what our cells, they remember what that feeling is, that dopamine response they get when they're having it. And sometimes it's not what our body really needs. We have to switch off that dopamine response, turn down the volume of the dopamine, so to speak. So we don't have that, oh my gosh, this is going to save my life experience when we eat that food. <laughs> you know, and, it, and it's really, it's tough for those of us that think we can intellectualize our way out of everything and realize it's going to take some time to change the memory, to change the habits, but you want to do it at, so that it's manageable so that you're right. successful at it. Yeah. Um, and the same thing with exercise. You, if I have a client who needs to lose a lot of weight until we look at the genetics to see like me, if there's <laughs> someone that's not going to be able to lose weight through exercise, we're really going to need to focus on the diet. And I, I think that exercise piece is one of the most important pieces. I love the food aspect of genetics and nutrition, but exercise is so life like eye-opening because there's so many different types of exercise. And especially when we're talking about like the thyroid, the adrenal system, and someone that can be in that fatigue state and is like, I just got to push to be able to exercise and then actually is backfiring because their body's like, no, 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 <laughs> you need to rest. You need to rest. You need and when I, I work at a cognitive decline Institute here in Sarasota, mm. and I did the exercise program. And one of the first things I always asked, show me their BDNF. So BDNF is brain derived nootropic factor and it's growth factors. You have four or five different variations, but what happens is when you exercise, you actually create new brain cells through the slang of what we call fertilizer. The, the analogy <laughs> is, is when you exercise, you create fertilizer in your brain. So then you can come immediately after you exercise to plant new brain cells. Mm -hmm. So I always had people do something cognitive after they got done exercising to stimulate that neurogenesis, to right. stimulate, you know, and the neuroplasticity, the creation of those new brain cells, those new connectors, and it's fabulous. And I had one client, I actually even went to the gym with him and went through his workout with him and he was doing fabulous, but he wasn't getting as he wasn't improving at the rate that we thought he should be. And I know that's a very judgment call, but there was something that we were missing. We went back and we checked his BDNF. He was not producing BDNF from exercise at all. Interesting. So, yeah, important. so all that hard work that he was doing was not helping that pathway. It wasn't, he wasn't getting that neurogenesis that he, so that filled that gap as to what was going on. So then you switch to the workaround. We increased his butyrate foods mm -hmm. and once the amortate. So there was other ways of generating that BDNF because genetically he wasn't able to produce it on his own. So fascinating. I love it. It's so great. Thank you so much for helping us to understand the genetics in a deeper way today. Cause there's, so, it's so involved. And I love that you also took the fear factor out of it and, and people think, Oh, my genetics is all about my ancestry. And that's just a very small piece, which I think I don't even run ancestry reports with patients myself. If they want to do it, they can do that on their own. But that to me is not a part of what I am helping with. Yes. In the moment. Right. Yes. Right. <laughs> and our genetics, we do get them from our family lineage and it helps and sometimes if I'm seeing what, what I do see with the ancestral piece, if I'm working a lot with thyroid and gut, sometimes I'll look at the, if they've had the ancestral piece, because depending on where they come from, they come from, if they have a Germanic heritage or from the UK or something like that, they can be more prone to having that connection of autoimmune disease with the gut and the thyroid together. So sometimes like we can tie that piece in together, which can be helpful for people, I think, to see the bigger picture. The gut, what foods were they brought up on? Exactly. Like me, I have the Irish heritage, <laughs> the uh, potato family. <laughs> right. There we go. Yes. And then I have a Germanic heritage too. So it's interesting for me to see all those pieces come together and I, with my genetics. <laughs> let's talk about, as we're wrapping up today, Annie, let's talk about how people can work with you and getting their DNA done with the three and four genetics, how they can connect with you, find you uh, more about the LifeWave patches, how they can find that as well. And the easiest way, we're, gonna, we're just going to wrap it all up into one little package. <laughs> Boom. I, just email me. <laughs> Email. Just email me at your total body. There it is. Your total body at yahoo.com. That's the name of my company. So it's your total body at yahoo.com. You contact me through there, say either I'm interested in those LifeWave patches, talk to me about stem cell activation. 
Talk to me about the glutathione. Talk to me about reducing inflammation. And the same thing with the 3X4 genetics. Just email me and then I will send you the information on how that process works. I can tell you, you know, it's so simple. We order the, the kit gets sent to you, you swab, you send the kit in, I get the report, I do the analysis, I have that analysis reviewed by a senior member at 3X4, and then we get together and go over your report and then you get your report. Nice. That sounds great and super easy. <laughs> and then you have yeah. a, a couple of freebies. Tell us about those. Yes. With the LifeWave packages, you contact me. We do have wholesale packages, so I can extend those wholesale packages to you through the LifeWave. And through for the 3X4 genetics, I can't reduce the price of the kit, but I can give you a discount on my assessment. So for your listeners and viewers, <laughs> this is Dr. Lulu, and I'll give you a $50 discount on the assessment process. Great. Love that. Thank you for uh, helping our audience do achieve optimal health. That's great. I love it. And we'll have all that in the show notes for everyone to be able to okay. contact you at your total body at yahoo.com. Super easy. And your website is the, your total body at C uh, dot CO, right? I don't even bother with the website. has not been updated. <laughs> okay. So that's why I'm just sending everybody the email because the, the life wave and the genetics are new. Okay. Um, so yeah, the website has not been updated. So just contact me by email and I can send you all the information you need. And I have a lot of it. Okay, super. I love that. Well, everyone will be contacting you through that. And one last question as we're wrapping up today, Annie, if you had an unlimited budget, what would you do right now to make the biggest impact on the planet? I know I heard you um, <laughs> ask the last one. I was like, she's going to ask. She's going to ask me. <laughs> I want to put them all together into one like fun podcast work because they're so amazing. All the, the answers people give. I love it. I really think just an unlimited supply of clean, healthy drinking water. There's something that simple where we live. We can't even drink the water that comes out of the tap. I know. Same here. Yeah. I, I don't right, recommend so I it to anyone. I can't imagine <laughs> I can't imagine what it's like in parts of the world as far as a drinking water supply goes. So that would be my wish is that there would be an unlimited supply of clean, healthy drinking water for everyone. Mm, I love that one. That's a great one. So important. I always remember when I talk about water, my mom one time told me, she was, I never thought in my lifetime I would have to pay for water. And I always think about that. I was like, why can't we have this, like you said, an unlimited amount of great drinking water that is free. <laughs> <laughs> where did you where did you grow up? I grew up all over. I was born uh, in Atlanta and I've lived all over. My mom uh, was born in uh, Ohio and she's lived all over like but in the south, a lot in the south. <laughs> I remember as a little girl in Pennsylvania mm -hmm. that my grandfather and I would get our water jugs together. Mm -hmm. Empty water jugs and we'd go in the car and there was a we go on this country road and there was a pool out and there was a pipe coming out of the side <laughs> of the hill. And there was water. Wow, that's and we great. Were, and we were filling up the water jugs and that was just pure spring water oh, coming out of the hillside. That's amazing. There are some secret springs like that around here that you can find, but you have to be in the know. <laughs> yeah, you really have to know someone. I live in Asheville. So of course we're in the mountains where we have a lot of water, especially right now as we're getting into the rainy season. But yeah, water, so important for everything you talked about today. It's a huge, oh, yes. yes, everything you talked about, uh, the water affects our genes. <laughs> our detoxification, our methylation, especially our detox detoxification, we need to move those toxins and get them out. That's right. Without water, it can't happen. Thank you so much, Annie. It's been a joy to have you on the show today, and I can't wait to share it with the world. Thank you, Dr. Lulu. Thanks for having me.